I don't have cheese out. So we're gonna thaw some mozzarella here. <laughs> Crisis averted. Put this in the sun. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Alyssa. I'm the owner and creator of The Floral Apron. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about making thin crust pizza at home. This is going to cover my thin crust pizza dough recipe, my favorite creamy basil pesto and red sauce recipes, and all of the tips and tricks that I have picked up perfecting this recipe over the last two years. From rolling out the pizza dough, transferring it to a pizza peel, making sure that it doesn't stick to your pizza peel, and then transferring it to the pizza stone in the oven for a perfectly crisp crust. As you can imagine, there is a lot of information I want to cover today, so we're just going to get straight into it with my thin crust pizza dough recipe. You're going to start with your two teaspoons of yeast, some sugar, and one and a half cups of warm water. It's always a good idea to check that your yeast is still alive. I can tell from this bubbling that the yeast is indeed still alive. Next, we're gonna add whole wheat flour and about half of my all-purpose flour. Then I'm going to stir this all together. Once it starts to get combined, I'm gonna add my salt and my olive oil. You can see here that my dough is fully combined and I've made a shaggy dough. At this point, I'm gonna knead it on speed two for 10 to 15 minutes. You can do this without a KitchenAid mixer. I've done it all by hand before. It's just a lot faster if you do have a mixer on hand. This has been kneading for about two minutes and I can tell that it's a little bit wet, so I'm going to add in my remaining quarter cup of flour here. You can already see that it's not sticking to the sides of the bowl nearly as much. Been kneading the dough for about eight minutes and you can see there is definitely gluten development here. Stick a little bit between my fingers. You can see it's stretchy. And it's actually got pretty good gluten development already, but it looks a little bit wet. So I'm gonna add a little bit of extra flour. Use my pop it here. <laughs> I just sprinkle in a little bit at a time. Once that's mostly incorporated, I am gonna turn it out onto my counter here and do the last little bit by hand. Sprinkle a little bit of flour on my countertop and then use this very handy bowl scraper to get all of the dough off of my attachment and out of the bowl. You don't have to get all of it off, I just always do. <laughs> Scrape out my bowl here. I'm gonna take my ring off for this. Dust with a little more flour because I can tell it's still pretty wet. What I'm looking for here is a dough that is really stretchy but only tacky and not sticky. So right now where there's a lot of extra flour on the edge of the dough that has not yet been absorbed, I can touch it and it's not leaving a residue on my fingers. That's what I want after all of this flour has been absorbed. So I'm gonna keep kneading it until I get to that point, adding flour as needed. So I'm still getting pretty sticky, but it's not leaving too much residue on my hands. Most of this is because I have a lot on my hands already. But I'll still add another sprinkle of flour here. And all of the tools I'm using here, I have linked in my Amazon storefront under pizza tools, so that if you are looking for one of these specific things, they're all in one place. You can find them at your own leisure. I've linked that in the description. I might have just had too much water in my measuring cup. <laughs> This is getting a lot closer. We're still a little bit sticky, but it's mostly tacky. So I'll add one more sprinkle of flour for good measure and then call it good. And now you can really see this is a stretchy dough. It's tacky, but it's not sticky. You know, it's hard to see with my fingers already having some dough on them, but it's really not leaving a lot of residue on my hands. And this is really nice to work with. If you're really not sure, you can pull off a piece about the size of a quarter, stretch it out with your fingers and hold it up to a light source. If you can see light coming through it without the dough breaking, you've developed enough gluten. Now that this dough has been properly kneaded, 
it's going to rest for an hour until it doubles in size. So I'm gonna put it back in the bowl that I mixed it in. It's not necessary to use oil because I have this handy scraper, but if you'd like to line it with a little bit of oil, you're more than welcome to. You wanna cover it with a kitchen towel, plastic wrap, a lid, just to make sure that it doesn't dry out. This is fine at room temperature. You can also put it someplace warm for about an hour. At this point, there are a few things I like to do while my dough is proving. I still have to make my sauces, I need to prepare my vegetables, and I need to make sure that my pizza stone is in the oven and will start preheating. I think we're gonna start with making the sauces because I can just throw those in the fridge, then I'm gonna prepare the vegetables, and then we'll get the oven preheated and ready to go. So I have everything I need for both of my sauces here. For the creamy basil pesto, it literally could not be easier. I do have the recipe up on my website, but it's one part pesto to one part heavy cream. It really could not be easier. The recipe on my website has enough servings for four pizzas, whereas this one I'm just gonna make a single serving because that's as much pizza as I'm gonna make and I already have some in the fridge. And I don't mean for this video to be a shameless plug for all of the other recipes on my blog, but if you're in need of a fresh pesto recipe, I have one on the blog. <laughs> Pour some heavy cream in here. That looks about right. This is cooking, it's not baking, so it doesn't really matter. And then I just stir all of that together. You'll be left with a sauce that looks like creamy basil pesto. This is my husband's and my favorite sauce, but the red sauce also has a special place in our hearts. I'm gonna put a lid on this and stick it in the fridge until I'm ready to use it. And I know there are gonna be red sauce purists out there who say that red sauce should be made from fresh tomatoes or canned tomatoes and it shouldn't be cooked. Um, I like the uncooked tomato flavor, but it usually ends up runny even after I've strained it, and this is just a lot more foolproof. I can add my own seasonings, and I don't really have to worry about if it's gonna be super runny and end up onto the pizza stone and make my pizza crust soggy. This, I know that it will turn out good every single time. Just food for thought. Um, if you already have a red sauce that you like, you are more than welcome to use that. This is just what I use because it's really easy. I'm using tomato paste from a can. I have used really good double concentrated tomato paste from a tube and I loved the flavor of that, but it's a little bit more expensive and I didn't want to splurge on it for this video. This is so fun. I'm so glad I get to do this. <laughs> Got most of it out there. I like to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a splash of olive oil and whatever seasonings I'm craving at the time. In the past, I made this with rosemary, thyme, basil, and a little bit of garlic powder. I just got an Italian herb blend from Morton and Bassett, and I think that it would work really well for this, so I'm gonna open, oh, oh, it is really sealed. <laughs> so I'm gonna add some of this in addition to my other favorite flavors, just to make sure we have all of our spice bases covered. If you don't want to overspice it, I do have some guidelines in the blog post for this pizza sauce, giving you some ideas of quantities to put in your pizza sauce, just in case you don't want to go overboard. That's right under the ingredients tab. That looks pretty good. I don't need it to be anything super herby and flavorful. Most of the flavor is coming from the tomato paste, but just a little something extra. Reuse my measuring cup here. I like to add a splash at a time. It makes it a lot easier to add the water than doing it all at once because it gets a little bit splashy. And I like this shirt and I would rather not ruin it on its first time out. This is getting close. I think one more splash and we'll be set. I threw a pizza party for 16 of my closest friends this Valentine's Day, and I had so many pizzas going in and out of this oven. It was a lot of fun. We had this entire counter covered with toppings. I highly recommend throwing a big old party and having everybody bring a topping or two. We had so much. I had mozzarella cheese in my fridge for like a month. In fact, we only just finished it off, I think a week or two ago. Okay, I was a little bit wrong. I need, need another splash. I do have actual measurements for this in the recipe in case you don't wanna play around with it like this. It's probably a lot faster, uh, but I'm having fun. 
So this is the consistency I'm looking for where it starts to come off in wet clumps as opposed to just chunks. I know that's not a very beautiful way to explain it, but I think you get the picture. <laughs> and then just stick it straight in the fridge. If you wanna cover it, you can. I'm gonna use it in less than an hour, so I'm not gonna bother covering it. Next up, I'm gonna start preparing my vegetables. Things like bell peppers and onions have a pretty high water content that I like to roast or saute before I put them on the pizza. Again, it just helps prevent that soggy crust that nobody really likes in pizza. I have two bell peppers here one onion, and I have actually not roasted mushrooms before. I usually saute them, but we're gonna try it today. <laughs> have my roasting pan lined with aluminum foil for easier cleanup, and then I'm just gonna chop all of these vegetables, throw them on here, and then toss them with some olive oil and salt and pepper before I put them in my tiny toaster oven. I like to put my bell peppers in strips for this. It just makes it a little bit easier to identify what it is on the pizza. And I think it looks prettier. These end pieces, I just slice them this way. Reduces my chance of cutting myself and they still taste good. We move on to the red pepper. Tap them a few times to get any seeds out. And again, slice up the ends as easily as you can. I think this is my first real cooking video. That's kind of fun. As you can see behind me, my dough is definitely proving. You can see that it's starting to make a bubble on the lid. So I'm just gonna pop it open a little bit to let that air escape, and that way the lid will not pop off and terrify me later, which has definitely happened before. <laughs> That's all, just a little burp. Then we move on to the onion. Which I like to cut off the ends and then slice it in half down the middle. Peel off this outer skin here. I'd like to try to get it in one. Sometimes it doesn't do it. Ah, yes, haha. <laughs> and then depending on how much onion you want, you can use half or a whole onion. If I have any leftover veggies, I just pop them in the fridge and use them in omelets or the next day for pizza. So uh, you really can't go wrong with using even a whole onion here, even if you don't use it all on your pizza. I slice it in strips one way and then I rotate it 90 degrees. Depending on the size of the onion, I'll either cut it in half or thirds. This is a pretty small onion, so I'm just gonna cut it in half. That leaves me with some nice strips of onion that, again, are easily distinguishable. Ooh, ooh, it is hitting me. It's a good onion. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. this here, take a step back, and then slice my mushrooms pretty thinly. And I'm just gonna do a couple because like I said, I have not actually roasted mushrooms before. Okay, that is a lot of vegetables. I just turned my Breville toaster oven on. That's where I'm gonna roast these vegetables. But the last thing I'm gonna do is roast a garlic. Tiny little piece of foil. Just make a little home for him. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top and let it soak for a little bit while you prepare the rest of your vegetables. I'm just gonna give this a hearty drizzle. A few hearty pinches of salt, a bit of pepper, and then do the best you can. It works better if you have an actual like ground pepper dispenser because uh, this is a small area. Uh, that worked fine. Do the same with your salt and then another round of olive oil on top just to make sure that it's getting in there. Close it up, make sure you know where the top is, and then just mix this up with, oh, mushroom down. 
Did not get my shirt though. All right. Okay, got that. Sad little mushroom. I'm gonna add one more little drizzle on top just for good measure. This is gonna go in my toaster oven for 15 to 20 minutes at 400 Fahrenheit. I think that's like 180 Celsius. Um, it'll be here just until your vegetables start to look cooked, but not mushy. Make sure you put the garlic clove in there. Uh, not super important where it goes in the pan, just you wanna make sure that it is face up so none of the oil leaks out at the bottom. Then clean up your workspace once more. And as an aside, it is possible to make all of this with just one oven. In the past, I have roasted my vegetables on the middle rack while the gas oven is preheating. It's just a little bit more difficult to figure out where to put a rack that's 400 degrees somewhere in my kitchen. Um, that's why I like using the Revel for this. At this point, we are almost ready to make the pizza. I'm gonna start to preheat the oven and make sure that my pizza stone is in there. My oven likes to vent where I have this, so it's gonna get moved. Pizza stone on the bottom rack. 475. Get my workspace ready here. My rolling pin and my pizza peel. One thing I wanna say about pizza peels, the wooden ones are much less likely to have your pizza stick to them. There are a lot of tips and tricks I'll get into a little bit later, but I prefer the wooden pizza peels. You also don't have to get one. They're very helpful to have, but I get this is not um, a shape that everyone can easily store in their kitchen. So something like the wooden cutting board that I was just using, we made that do for about a year before we invested in this $30 pizza peel. So if you have the space for it, I recommend it. If you don't, no worries, just use a wooden cutting board, you'll be fine. I also really like this as a pizza cutter. Um, it's not super sharp, so it's really great if you have kids that like to get into things, but it cuts the pizza really well um, and it doesn't really crush anything, it just cuts, which I don't really know how that works because it's literally made of cardboard and it, like, again, it's not sharp, but it does the job. And again, if you're looking to upgrade your pizza equipment, I have all of this linked in my Amazon storefront under pizza tools. Uh, it just helps support my little blog if you purchase from the affiliate links there. At no cost to you, I should say, very important. <laughs> And to get the pizza out of the oven, I have not even attempted doing it with the pizza peel, but it's really helpful for transferring it in. I just use a good old tongs to get it out. Whew. Yeah, those look pretty good. And if you're here because you watched my Breville Smart Oven Air Fryer Pro unboxing video, welcome. That did really well, I'm glad you're here. I am in the process of filming a full review for this after I've had it for about four months. Long story short, I recommend it, but there are a few things that I think could be improved upon that you might wanna keep in mind before you buy it. So keep an eye out for that. Should be coming out in about a month or so. My dough is looking good. We're pretty fluffy, so I'm gonna divide it up here. Try to scrape it as best I can with this guy. I like to dust it with a little bit of flour and then divide it into four. I like to separate whatever I'm not gonna be eating, wrap it in parchment paper and put it in a freezer bag. I either store it in the fridge for up to three days, gets a very nice, slightly fermented, almost sourdoughy taste, highly recommend. Um, or you can put it in the freezer, in that freezer bag. And since I only have two sauces here today, I'm gonna put two of these in storage for a future time. Okay, that was slick. I like to wrap them in parchment paper because this dough will stick to the freezer bag. You won't think it will, but it will rise until it freezes and then it is an absolute pain to get it off. You have to cut open the freezer bag and then scrape at it with this thing and the parchment paper just makes it a lot easier to handle in the future. <laughs> this is my current pizza dough stash. And as you can see, we're getting low, so it's a good thing I'm making this today. Here is where all of the pizza making tips are gonna come in handy. So I have two pieces of dough here. It's gonna make two pizzas, which is enough for two to four people. If you are only eating the pizza, one pizza per person is, that's where it's at. We're gonna have my one piece of dough over there covered by a towel. 
Then we are going to roll out one piece of dough at a time. You want a light coating of flour on your counter or your workspace. We're gonna flip it every time we roll it just to make sure that it's not sticking to the counter because you don't wanna to get to the point where it's rolled out and it looks really great. You try to pick it up and it is just fully stuck. Also very helpful if you have all of your ingredients out and ready to go. If you have one side that's a little bit shorter than the other or a little bit thicker, you can stretch it out with your fingertips. If you have very long fingernails, keep in mind that those can punch a hole in the dough, but unless your fingernails are really long, I mean, Mine have a little bit of length to them and they're fine. Just keep rolling it until it gets to the shape. This looks like it's absorbed a lot of the flour, so I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more on. And just a touch, I mean, sparing is best. <laughs> okay, flip this over and see, it's already starting to stick to the counter, which is why we keep moving it. We don't want it to stick significantly. But that was relatively painless. I'm gonna get a little bit more flour on the backside just to make sure that doesn't happen again. This dough makes about 12 inch pizzas. Um, I think we're pretty close to that. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to shape this any more circularly than I have it. So we're just gonna call this good. As soon as you put the pizza on this pizza peel, just imagine a countdown in your mind. It's not a very scary countdown, but the dough is always growing. It's always going to be absorbing more flour and it's going to become less hydrated as you go. The more flour it absorbs, the easier it's going to be for it to stick to the wooden pizza peel. So your goal is to have it on this pizza peel for as little amount of time as possible. You don't have to get all of your toppings on in like 30 seconds, but you do want to move speedily. So you have it on here. I like to give it one quick shake to make sure that, uh, not not all the way off, but I like to give it one quick shake to make sure that all of the flour is on the bottom and all of the dough is coated. So we have it here. It's not the most beautiful pizza I've ever rolled that we'll save that for the next one. So we have my red sauce. I'm gonna do a hearty two spoonfuls here. Spread it out to the edges. That looks pretty good. So every so often, if you think about it, just give it a little shake. It will help you <laughs> a lot in the long run. Cheese, my now somewhat cool vegetables, and my pepperoni. You can leave your mozzarella in large chunks. I like to split them up a little bit just so it's easier to have uh, more coverage. Otherwise, I'd have like three pieces of mozzarella on here. Squeeze the roasted garlic out. Oh, they're the ones that have the multiple cloves in one. I hate those, I hate them. Add your vegetables wherever you want on here, however much you want. The more you pile on, the more difficult it will be to keep them all in one location because you're shaking this pizza in order to get it off of the peel. But again, if you're not waiting like 20 minutes in between pizzas, you should be okay to get it off. Add a few roasted garlic cloves and they're not nearly as strong when they're roasted. I'm, some of you are probably going, oh my word, it's not that bad. That looks pretty good. Um, I forgot my pepperoni. If I put the pepperoni right on top of the vegetables, there's not enough to hold it down so that when I shake it, they end up sliding around a lot more than they would. So we are at the point where you can see I'm shaking it a little bit and it's not moving. Don't panic. If you continue shaking it lightly, it will pick up and you won't have any issues getting it to unstick from the pan. If you try to go really violently, really quickly, you're gonna have your toppings fly all over the place and you're, it's gonna be pizza disaster, everybody's gonna cry and be so sad. But if you start slowly and then you increase your shaking, you'll be totally fine. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, my oven is preheated, my pizza stone has been in there for quite some time, my pizza is ready to go on and I'm shaking it, it's coming off, we can do this. I push the pizza peel to the back third of the oven and I shake it to the very bottom of the pizza peel and as soon as the pizza touches the pizza stone, I remove the peel in one slick motion. Then we're gonna set a timer for eight minutes to check on it. I'll get my order of ingredients ready this time so I don't have the same thing as last time. Oh, wow, nails are safe. Pepperoni, garlic, veggies. To make it a little bit easier to get circular pizzas, you can shape them into balls first. Didn't do that with the last one, probably should have. Just kind of tuck all of the edges underneath and 
Use the sides and bottom palms of your hands to continue twisting until it's pretty circular. Dust with a little bit of flour here, and then I roll out, rotating it 90 degrees after every roll. I think that'll be pretty good. Dust your pizza peel with flour just a smidge, rub it in, and then transfer your pizza dough. Get your cutting board ready for the pizza that's in the oven. At this point, I only have two minutes left, so I'll just let this one sit. And if you keep shaking it every so often, there's really not too much of a danger. It's just when it stays in one place that it gets a little problematic. Okay, that looks pretty good. Definitely don't have your pizza peel handle sticking out because if you can trip on it, you probably will. I like to have my tongs in my dominant hand, which is my right hand, and my cutting board in my left hand. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you have it down, it's second nature. Our crust is lightly golden on the edges. Everything looks melted, so it's ready to come out. Make sure that your oven door is down far enough or you're gonna burn yourself like I did. Put the edge of the cutting board right on the stone, drag the pizza onto it, and there you go. <sighs> it smells so good. And then add my toppings in the ideal order, which is sauce. Oh, I love this sauce so much. Divide up my cheese. Add my pepperoni. You can add more pepperoni if you add it first too. See, look at how much more I was able to fit in here. Add my remaining garlic cloves. My husband really likes these. So I usually put more on one side just for him and that's his half. Add a couple handfuls of my roasted veggies. Okay, see how I'm getting a few of these vegetables to move, but because I'm moving it in short little increments, they're not going very far. So now that I have double checked that my pizza is not stuck to the peel, we're gonna do that same quick motion of opening the oven door, sliding this in, letting it hit the pizza stone, removing the pizza peel in one quick motion, and then shutting the oven door and waiting for it to bake. And now the best part is eating the pizza. Roll it back and forth on either side. Oh man, this is gonna be a good pizza. My mouth is watering. <laughs> then divide. And you cannot forget the flaky salt. Just a little bit on top. Adds that extra little sum sum. Ooh. Okay, could have let this go for another minute, so I'll let that one go for nine minutes. Normally it is straight up. So it's a little droopy, but I promise the next one will be better. Oh man, this is so good. <laughs> it's just so good. You get a really strong tomato flavor from the red sauce, but it's not overwhelming. Mm. It's a good crust. I have to figure out somewhere to put this pizza while I get that one out. Hold on. So again, dominant hand holding my tongs, non-dominant hand holding my cutting board. Ooh, yeah, this one looks great. I always like to let the pizza set for about a minute or two at room temperature just so it stops bubbling. Is a good crust. Here, I'll get my knife out for you. This is gonna be dangerous. It's a good crust. The pesto. <laughs> I checked all the boxes. Mm. And because I might as well, I'm gonna try putting this pizza back on the stone for a couple minutes just to see if the bottom crisps up. Oh, see, okay, this one was good. Oh, 
could have been bad. If this does not convince you to try thin crust pizza, I really don't know what will. Uh, super easy to make. The crust is a little bit time intensive, but it's not difficult by any means. You can do it in a stand mixer, you can do it by hand. And I mean, you get this every single time. You saw my pizza dough stash. Like this is a meal that I love having on hand. It's super easy to make. And while I wouldn't say it's a health food, it's so good, fresh out of the oven. I wish you all the best in making your thin crust pizzas as crispy as you like. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm. I always like to let the pizza sit. Do I have pizza on my face? I'm gonna check.